the candidate for having some fun, you know? You better call down Corey. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about an all-out party, and we're getting it started. Mr. President, you mind some electric guitar? Washington, D.C. will never be the same. Speak <laughs> This podcast may contain content that might be objectionable. The views and opinions expressed in the podcasts produced on this channel are those of the individual podcasters and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of AMV Zone Podcast. Some podcasts are for mature audiences and include language not suitable for young listeners. Listener discretion is advised. All right. Everybody, welcome to another episode of AMV Zone Podcast. My name is Mark, as known as Dark Nova, and I will be your host for today. We have with us Corey1695. I'm going to ask you about those numbers, but go ahead and tell us a bit about yourself, man. Uh, what's up, guys? Uh, as Mark introduced me, I'm Corey1695. Um, I am a AMV editor, uh, been editing overall for like 10 plus years, uh, been, uh, with editing AMVs for around five-ish. Um, I mean, Damn, that's, yeah. yeah, um, definitely branching out a little bit more now. Uh, I used to be just a, uh, a DBZ exclusive editor. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I know how everyone thinks about that um but i know where i I'm came from and uh I'm definitely branching out a little bit more now and i guess that's where i'm at yeah man i mean we can definitely see you from today's standpoint there there are so many different styles right mm -hmm. um you could probably be seen as a raw editor like all gen right yeah uh, i i I could say that. I mean, I I can do that. Um, I, I mean, I my... consider yes, that because there's a lot more raw play in there, right? And and you're at a DBC. That's like a raw guy's dream, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah I, yeah. I definitely say my style is more, I guess, old gen oriented, with all the the uh, the hard because, thinking and stuff that I yeah, do. Because there, I also see that even if there's a lot of dbc i mean you have probably a lot of love for people like let's be epic and jgc right i mean yeah they're they're uh they're good buddies of mine i've known them for for years now um yeah did they uh, sort of inspire you to edit um actually i've met them along the road so oh okay yeah yeah so, so i what didn't actually even know who they were you? What actually oh really? Me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know who they were before I started editing. Um, yeah. So I guess I can do a little like introduction to how I started. Um, so I started editing. Uh, before I started editing AMVs, I just I would edit anything I could get my hands on. So like. <laughs> oh, I have a I have a story about that. You know your oldest clips, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. let me. Your I'll, oldest. I love to hear that one. Um. Yeah, we already so, talked about that a little yeah, bit we, before we started yeah, we this. we touched it a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah, so your oldest clips are hockey. Uh, some of I my oldest clips, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My Can oldest ones that I have something about published. That? Yep. So I'm looking at the dates now. It says uh, 2010. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I got some stuff from then. I got, I got a, a Halo Reach one. Uh, unless it, it's actually pretty funny that it comes up in the conversation because that just came out on PC again. Mm. Um, yeah, so I did a little like video music video with that. I just I really wanted to uh, put my thoughts in and like I really like creating things. So it wasn't even just videos like. Um, yeah, did you like, like uh, how did you even find Sony Vegas or did you like do your research to find it? Well. Well, actually, uh, yeah, I did a little bit of research. So I started off with uh, Windows Movie Maker, as a lot of us did. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So when I started video editing, I was, I was real young. So I'm 24 now. Uh, it's like 10, I don't know, 10 plus years ago. Um, like 14, 
we only had one computer in the house. Uh, my dad had the little, the big ass, uh, the the box PC, the the girl, the gray one with the gray keyboard. The whole nine yards was the only oh, PC. Yeah, and that's like yeah. Windows uh, ninety seven shit. It, it, it actually like... had well Windows ninety eight. It was the same thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was it was like that. It was one computer in the house. And that was it. The only thing that had internet. And I could only use it when he wasn't working. So whenever he like went out to work, I would get on that computer and I would just start messing with it. Um, and I would open up what I spent a lot of my time in Windows Movie Maker. Um, just putting oh, stuff in there and messing with it. Um, I made a couple like videos with my friends and I would edit that. Just like us messing around with Nerf guns and stuff. Just like whatever. Whatever I could get my hands on, I could edit. So and you're already creative. From a young age, you wanted to make some yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. yeah, I was just a creator at heart, and then yeah, I, I can feel that. I just somewhere along the way, I got back into DBZ. Just like I mean, I've always been. Since well, I was you a kid. say you, yeah, you say you got back into it, but yeah, yeah. Um, did you have it on? Like, did you see it on TV? Yeah, when I was little, I watched it on Cartoon Network when I was. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like, like always. I remember, you know, I'm from, uh, I was born in Lithuania. And mm -hmm. that's where I found DBZ. And here in Norway, where I moved when I was seven, we have nothing of that. Wow. There, there are a few people that, that like, knew like get what that it was. childhood yeah. DBZ feel, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's yeah. a little bit better over here. Um, it, I mean, it aired on Cartoon Network. And... I mean, I, it was oh. one of those mainstream shows like Pokemon. You had like Dragon Ball Z, you had Yu Gi Oh, you had Pokemon. Like, you know, there's yeah. those big, those big name bunch. shows. Yeah. Um, Yu Gi Oh and Pokemon more so was more popular over here. But DBZ definitely still was like grateful yeah. that it was a big name over here. And um, after I was editing, like, I was editing like hockey clips and stuff because. I play hockey and I've been playing since I was four. So I just kind of naturally gravitated towards that. And then after I spent a little time with that, I started, um, started messing around with like Dragon Ball stuff. And I had, I had a whole bunch of like DVDs. I got a whole cabinet behind me of yeah. like, of like old DVDs and stuff, all four, three stuff. Wait, so, what so I was, you actually had it? You, yeah, you had so, DVDs of Dragon yeah, Ball? Yeah. So what I did wow. was I took the CDs or the DVDs, and I would burn them onto my, my dad's computer. Oh, man. Yeah, and then get the file off of that and then edit that in Windows. So then none of that LimeWire shit? No. Nah. I mean, well, I did use LimeWire, just not for video editing. I used LimeWire for yeah. like music back in the day. I see. Um, so, yeah, eventually, well, you still use the same burned uh, footage? Uh, no, not nowadays. It's actually not that. I mean, I guess I haven't tried to burn it re now because I don't have a. a CD. It probably would have been quite great quality, right? Yeah, it, it was. It wasn't to... decent. It wasn't decent quality, but I think, um, I think what like how I would, was burning it, it just, I maybe my settings were messed up. I didn't know anything about that back in the yeah, day. Yeah, so there's it didn't a come lot out of as stuff. Good as that, yeah, it didn't come out yeah. as good as I thought it'd be, but it was still like not bad Editable. at all for what two thousand. <laughs> Like yeah. 12, whatever 10 whatever it was and uh i took a little bit of a break from it and then so i tried different i tried a little bit of other programs but they weren't good like i tried video pad and that was terrible uh, did you try after Effects? Um, i did not actually i actually have i've had after effects on my computer for a short period of time yeah. and then i messed with it for a little bit and then that was really yeah i'm just i haven't really gotten into after effects um, I do want to. It's definitely on the bucket list. And as far as professional terms go, it's definitely something that I, I know I would need as a tool under yeah. my belt. So it's something yeah, I'm aiming to learn eventually. But uh, I Vegas did some research. feels like home, right? What's that? Vegas feels like home, right? Yeah. For yeah. me, I've, I've tried different programs, but Vegas still feels like home, man. Mm -hmm. So like... I found Vegas doing research and stuff, and I was just like, yeah, yeah, like Vegas is the program. So, like, I, I finally got my hands on that. And from there, I just started doing DBZ. And I did that for a couple of years, for, I don't know, two to three years. 
but yeah, Vegas definitely feels like home. Um, I tried other programs. Like I tried Premiere. Um, I actually had to learn Premiere for uh, for school because I had oh. a couple, yeah because I had a couple classes, uh, video editing classes in school. In, in you can college. you can use you can use that. Yeah, yeah. I but mean, you feel you gravitate towards Vegas either way. Yeah, I'm I'm not a big fan of Premiere. I mean, I know it's the same stuff, but just like the I know I I even know you can like change the layout to where it resembles Vegas. But mm-hmm. just, there's some things in Vegas, like like you said, it just feels like home for me. So yeah. it's definitely my go-to. Um, yeah. yeah. I've been I'm learning. Uh, you've been learning Vegas over time. Mm-hmm. Editing a lot of Dragon Ball, and then eventually you found Attack on Titan. Yeah, what? yeah. It's a funny story about that. So yeah, I was editing Dragon Ball for a little while, um, looking up to looking up to about a lot of guys that. I watched when I was younger, like um, uh, there's Style AMV, uh, just like Wecto, a lot of the the yeah. the heavy editors, um, and then you got guys like Elite Vegeta, Dion, uh, I hate to say it, three three Q, just like all those all those type of guys, um, and even farther back, uh, you got like Virgil, Saiyan Duck, uh, you know, there's just a whole bunch of names I could throw around, just like those guys. Yeah, I know. And then yep. um, once I, after I got a couple of years, three years of editing with Vegas under my belt, um, along that along the way, I got a comment from uh, JGZ. He was, he was mm-hmm. just like, nice, man. You want to join my uh, map? And I was like, uh, yeah, sure. So I did a couple of those for him. And then um, we would message each other on Skype. And then he was like, hey, buddy, so, like, we have this group chat. You want to join? I'm like, uh, sure, man. Like, I, And at this point, I wasn't really involved in the community. Like, like I had, like, people that I knew comment on my videos and stuff. Uh, you, when YouTube messaging was still around, I would use mm-hmm. that. But, like, I wasn't in a group chat or anything. And he was like, yeah, you want to join the group chat? I was like, yeah, sure. And I joined. And there was just all these big name editors in there. Like, you had a... I mean, at one point, I think Am was in there. Uh, Marvin was in there. Uh, yep. Got like Enzo, Cassia, uh, just all those guys. Yusuf was. Wait, in there. What, what chat was that? If you remember, it was. The name. Um, there was there was two of them. The first one was uh, the Z editors. That's I think that was the name of it on mm. Skype. And then there was a bigger one just called like the editors chat, where it was like hundreds. Oh, of I was there, one. man. Oh yeah, you were in that one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> the one I... that was filled with like two thousand messages. Um, oh my god! Yeah, like you get day. on and then you see like, every day. Spam, spam, spam. <laughs> yup. Like Robin yeah. on them in that chat. Yeah, that was. Uh, you know, Skype days, good times. Good oh, time. absolutely. I some, sometimes I miss the Skype days. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's, I mean, it's really good with uh, with Discord. Mm-hmm. But at the oh, same yeah. time, it's kind of nostalgic when you think about Skype. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the way I look at it. Like, it's it's nostalgic. Um, just I mean, it's not more so the program, but like the days, like, yeah, like the time. It's kind of childhood, was, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is where everything started for me. Um, yeah. yeah, and then everyone started moving over to Discord. I was a little bit late to the game, but I finally got over. And uh, yeah. You joined the uh, 61 Guild and uh, well, even made your own little, Discord, right? Later in the way. First off, oh, okay. um, we had this like one group chat. We tried to re- like recreate our uh, Skype chat. And then I met Marvin through Discord. And he was like, hey, man, join my server. So I joined. And we would just play video games. Like, like it like, it's called the Gaming Hub. And we would just play games. And that's where I met a lot of like you guys before like JT. Because I started jt3 that's where i first started doing those tournaments i think that was when you really blossomed as well right yeah that's that's where i feel like i really yeah. blossomed too and that's where like around that time is also when i started watching other animes so jordan was like dude watch attack on tight like it's it's good you'll love it and this is when he first watched it so i gave it a shot and i watched it i was addicted i watched the whole yeah. first season and then i read the manga right afterwards damn and yeah, and then before season two even came out, or actually it was like right before season two came out, but yeah, I was addicted. And then after that, I just started watching more and more stuff. And 
that's I think that's yeah. when I really started branching out and meeting people so, and watching more stuff. Yeah, it's really about that um, watching anime aspect. So before that, you weren't really watching a lot of anime. No, I mean, not really. Honestly, like I like I said, I had those like Yu Gi Oh, uh, Pokemon, like you know, like all the, the children old stuff. school stuff. Yeah, yeah, all the OG stuff. But I wasn't really a big anime guy until I really started getting more into the community. I mean, you guys. Um, even now, I'm still branching out, but yeah. Um, yeah, I was a little bit late to the anime game, but I'm glad I got into it because it's there's so many good shows and things to edit and stuff. It's just like a whole new, yeah. As another, you kind of need a lot of different things, right? You need yeah, content. versatility. Yeah, and versatility even and variety. Yeah, even editing DBC for a long time. Like for example, you have Patrick Ward that mastered mm -hmm. scene selection for Naruto. Oh, absolutely. You can do the same thing for um, Dragon Ball, obviously. But mm -hmm. it's kind of nice having different anime. Oh, I agree. Stuff, just fresh content. Exactly. And that's how I, how I look at it. I I have this saying my dad used to say. It's, he says, uh, variety is the spice of life. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's when I, I think about that, it. Yeah. When when I when I say to branch out is the best thing you can do, um, and I'm glad I did. Um, and I'm just I edit whatever I'm, you know, whatever I'm feeling now, just like everybody else. I'm just, you know, yep. more branched out than I was before. Uh, so uh, right now you're mostly active at Sixty One Guild. Yeah. So we made that server. Me and uh, Yusuf. Well, Yusuf mainly was his thing. Um, and then I hopped on board a little bit, like right after, and it just blew up. And uh, we we weren't like it was just kind of like active on the side because I was also in the Lesby Epic server too. Those were the two servers I was yeah. active in, and that server had a little bit of a thing, and that, that server went down. Active. Yeah, it went downhill for a bit. <laughs> so all those members migrated over to the guild and we like double and triple in size and then from yeah. there we just really blossom and then we made a youtube channel and then the story goes on and now we're just, we're just a big, i've been part of that yeah server. yeah <laughs> but you also have your own uh, server or does it really just function um, as a glorified spam upload that, i mean that's, that's honestly yeah that's what it is um it's mainly i made it for all those like guys who or those kids who are like aren't really in this community a lot of yeah. a lot of this stuff in there is just like a bunch of kids trying to reach out to me i think it's easier for people to reach out like that well, way versus like a dm or something so, yeah you have a lot of fans now i guess um, yeah having built up your channel and all that it's really nice man mm -hmm. so yeah, definitely as we also talked about i was gonna touch about um the numbers behind your name 1695 <laughs> what is the significance right? um it's not like a crazy big thing but i get this question like all the time uh 16 is my hockey number that i've worn since i started playing at like four years old oh yeah and 95 is just the year i was born so 1995 so 16 hockey number 95 yeah that makes born. a lot of sense yeah yeah, yeah. it's not really it anything does. super deep but that's just where I got it from. It was, uh, hmm. the name came from back when I got an Xbox. I think the Xbox, uh, the regular one before the 360. When you yeah. type in your email, your email, and it comes up like, like a list of like pre-made names. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. So you've yep. kept the same name over the time? Oh, absolutely. I haven't changed it once. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. I mean, for the most part, yeah. That's the name that mm. I that I use for like everything. But when I started YouTube, <laughs> I'm still ashamed of this one. Um, we all we all have free, like man. we all have like <laughs> like weird names we first started out on. Mine. I uh, mean, I, I mean, I'm Dark Nova. <laughs> Hit me, man. Nobody cares. <laughs> True. I mean, I'm, I think mine's a little worse. But when I first oh. made my YouTube account, um, for like I don't know, like less than a year, my name on there was Hockey Mini Midget. And I spelled midget, M I G G E T. It was it was all one word. It was terrible. It was what? So yeah, I don't know how I got it, where I got it, why I put. I just I don't know. 
But damn, dude, are you yeah. trying to roast yourself, man? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I'm even looking at it now because it was back in the day, and you can't get rid of that link. It was like oh, when the links were different. Yeah. So now I have a separate one, like like a, like a Corey 6095 one, and then I have another one that for some reason YouTube defaults towards. That says it's uh, still mean, connected to you. Yeah, yeah. So if you go on my channel, you, if you look at the URL, you might even see it. Oh yeah, yeah. I have the same thing, but mine is like pure supernova. That's like mm-hmm. what I started off as. That's like that's your creation idea, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, that is funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on your channel as well, you have on your info um, tab, you have so much info, man. That's like a Tinder profile. Jesus. Yeah, right. Um, is all your accolades, all your achievements, and um, I don't know, I just quite kinda, a lot of info. Yeah, I kind of put all that there just to kind of remember it. Um, yeah. So notable achievements. You have quite a lot, man. Like first place in People's Choice and K contest. Uh yeah, that one was held by uh, Kazia or KK Byla, whatever you yeah. want to refer to her as. So all of these uh, contests. Were you like giving your all? Um, wanna did you really want to win all of them? I mean, like some of them, like were like it depends on the circumstance for each one. Like uh, that second one, the insane one. Uh, I just threw in a meth part, and that's what got me second place. Really? <laughs> I swear to God, there was no I mean, minimum. Like, there was no minimum requirement. I don't know why, but I was like, yeah. I'm just gonna throw in a meth part, and that's what I, I even did. got second place. Um. Yeah. And then like circumstance stuff, I think it was JT4, JT4. There was a funny story with that one. Um, I really I wanted that. to go all out. Yeah, I really wanted to go all out because I think I had I had a pretty good chance of at least getting you know up there in that one. And which and, round did you end up in? I think four. Well, I got in the round four, but I didn't make a video. My last. I've been there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, my last entry for that was a collab with marty which i love yeah. collabing with him by the way he's such a good guy yeah um i love that i love that guy um and i i really enjoy all his edits mm-hmm. yeah me too he's been editing for a long time like long long time you yep. so in general that's the really hard thing about contests makes you edit so much within the span of a few weeks mm-hmm. it's like and- that's a good thing for me because I look at it as at least I, not just editing, but like anything in life. It's like you, the best way to improve on anything is at least I think is stepping out of your comfort zone. So, yeah, and Joseph Peterman did that with style, right? Sometimes yeah. people were really angry <laughs> about them, the minor things, but yeah, but what are you going to do? Like, you, can't still... please, you, you can't please everybody. You know, no, yeah, that's true, but it still pushed you out of the comfort zone, and that was mm-hmm. great. I mean, it was a first for me. I mean, like, I had little, uh, like, other tournaments and stuff, but this was, I guess, the first real experience for me. Um, yeah, I think, uh, throughout the times, um, uh, Joseph tournament was the most significant one, yeah, and that's also the one where I, uh, when I did it, the first one I did was JT3, was when I got connected to a lot of. A lot more people in the community like outside of just dragon ball stuff yeah so like it's honestly where i met a lot of you guys yeah um besides and, like marvin server it's so important with uh community in general mm-hmm. community is such a big thing and it's sometimes it's even at least nowadays it, it almost feels like it's even more than the video editing it's just, yeah. it's just like yeah it's that just is like true. That it's, is just, true. it's about the connections and the people you meet and stuff I mean, just look at the family I made. Yeah, yeah. TK, exactly. we we're not just editors; we're really good friends and family. Exactly, and that's how you gotta look at it. And you guys are, um, you were telling me before we started, uh, you were you're going to uh going to Japan soon. Yeah. You, you see, that's... editing does such things to people. Like, I'm gonna meet complete strangers. I don't care, man. I mean, that's... They're my friends. I've been with them exactly. for five years. I mean, yeah, they, Plus, they might look a little bit different than what you imagine, but those those are probably guys you've been talking to every single day for three sixty five yeah. days a year for how many years? Like, 
Like, it's just. Yep. I have in real life friends that I don't see as. Yeah. Like the like, same amount of friendliness. Like we talk every single day, right? Mm-hmm. So it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I got I got a lot of friends like that here. Um, that, like, I I have a lot of like you know I have a lot of friends in real life. Like as as anyone, I at least has like you know a collection of people that that they're fond with in real life. But online, yeah. there's definitely people that I value more than than some of my like in real life friends and people in my life. Like, uh, and that's just, internet, man. You can meet yeah. so many people that you suddenly click with. Mm-hmm. just because you guys like doing you guys like making videos or just as you had something something as simple as that in common Similar hobbies yeah. yeah exactly it's crazy what stuff can bring people together yeah that is true mm-hmm. uh and also i was going to talk about what, what was i going to talk about now i don't know kind of froze up I mean, I'm an open book, man. So just hit me with whatever. <laughs> okay, pause, pause, pause. One moment. Um, I was listening to you, and it suddenly fell out. <laughs> it's all good. Um, man, I'm fucking broken. Um, <laughs> he might come back to you later. I'm gonna sit here half half an hour. Yeah, right. It. We'll be talking about something else, and you'll be like, "Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you." Uh, oh yeah. Oh, we can probably move on to something else. Okay. Um, let me ask you about. Yeah, I'll start over. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so also, um, okay, okay, okay. So, um, also, what are your views on, you have, like, well, you're seen as uh, a raw editor, right? What are, mm-hmm. your new, uh, what are your views on these newer editors, the ones that use After Effects and such? You find um, that... I mean, it's kind of a broad question. Um, I don't really, I'm not really biased towards any specific but Let's style think or... about in 2016, I think it was. When mm-hmm. all of those, um, uh, for example, Vine editors migrated um, towards YouTube. Yeah. Um, I mean, they. How was, with, how was yeah. that experience, man? Um, I mean, like a lot of those people that come from those, uh, those social media platforms, like because they had such restricted, like, time and like, like for example, like Instagram's another one. Um, they have like not the best quality upload quality in the world and for vine it's like what it was six seconds instagram it's like a minute so you got to learn to make short edits and what people like plus it's all about the numbers over there so it's just a different culture on the social media and and when i remember it was a culture clash literally it, it literally that's literally what happened it was a culture clash and then when vine went out all those people started moving half of them moved over to instagram half of them moved over to uh to YouTube and it's just kind of like a culture shock to a lot of people because you know I mean some of them some of them were like there were some really good editors to come out of that and then some just kind of like it's just so outlandish style so um yeah but over time do you feel like they sort of um, they adapted adapted yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually know I have a couple guys in mind that just really really adapted and you you that's they they came from that side of the community and now they're they're they're, you know really really good editors in my eyes so like Mm -hmm. yeah so there's i wouldn't say just because somebody came from a a different um side of the community i wouldn't i wouldn't put any bias against them yeah uh just as long as they're they're open if they i mean if they can become your favorite sort of editors Mm -hmm. over time yeah. As long as they sort of perform. Yeah, because as long as the there's speed a from going improvement. from six seconds to yeah. over a minute. Plus. It's, yeah, plus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is hard. Yeah, plus you're, you're going to a different audience too. So you're yeah. having different type of people judge your edits. 
and yeah. you might be it opens you up to like for example some more harsh criticism so yeah. which in uh, turn you, you know allows more you, people to improve yeah uh, i was also wondering as you talk about criticism have you been getting any haters on your edits that you were talking about haters um i mean like i said before you can't please everybody so there's definitely people out there that you know aren't biggest fans of what you do and that's just with anything you do so um as long as it's for me it's it's long as it's uh constructive i don't mind it and in fact i'm i'm always open to constructive criticism as long as it's just Mm. not like like blatant like just hostility because then that doesn't that doesn't offer anything to anybody yeah because um tournaments certainly created a lot of hostility Mm -hmm. remember a lot of people thrive off of that stuff it's just I think a it's lot of fun. people, yeah, it, it, exactly. It's fun. And a lot of people enjoy getting in, you know, getting into that type of stuff. It's like, it's like fight night. <laughs> so, yeah. um, at the end of the day, we're all, you know, we're all here doing the same stuff, um, and enjoying our hobbies. So it's, I wouldn't take anything too seriously. Yeah. And you're, you're saying enjoying our hobbies. Um, what is editing exactly to you? you plan on maybe pushing it further um yeah yeah yeah, actually and um i've thought about that and i've taken some steps toward that so um like i said before i've taken some classes in school so i'm pretty literate in premiere um and a couple other things and i've made some connections with people outside in my company so like one of my good buddies that i used to play hockey with he actually runs a video production company now so oh, wow. yeah so he that's mm-hmm, it's a big thing for me um he yeah he has his own video production company and he does like commercials he'll do he'll do like promotional videos for like companies and stuff just like he'll do like 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 whatever anything that's available like con like concert videos uh uh, like wedding yeah, man, videos, and you just like all these right types of stuff, in. and I and I yeah, and I talk to them, and I, I mean, it sounds kind of outlandish to some people, but I'm I'm not ashamed of it. I'll just show them some of my my stuff, what I've I've done, kind of like a like a demo reel. Like I think uh, I think Crimson. Yeah, you, about you feel earlier. that mm-hmm. you're comfortable with showing off your edits. Yeah, yeah, and like like uh, some of the guys said before. Um, it, it can get you the job. They don't. They don't care about what you're editing as long as yeah, you Crimson have the skill to do what they need. Well. Yeah, yeah. That's I, f- I forgot. I don't know if it was Crimson or Pan, but one of them said it. Uh, hmm. It doesn't matter what you edit. Um, as long as you got the skills and you have what that company is looking for, you can get the job. And um, yeah, I talked to him, so he said he's open to having me once I'm I'm done or I get through school. And just a little bit more branching out, talking to some other people, um, other companies I'm interested in. I don't know what I want to do with it exactly, but I know it's it, it's a skill yeah. that's under my belt. And it that, can be a future. Yeah, it, that's what I'm saying. It can be a future, and it's something that can definitely be utilized. Yeah. And I'd like to because yeah, it. now you're studying something completely different. Yeah. So I I study communications. Um, when I started college, um. Actually, when I first got into college, I started up with a uh, graphic design. So I wanted to just do mm. like, like maybe like the website design, a little bit of coding, a little bit of stuff like that. Um, a lot of computer. I was at least I was aiming for it to be computer work, but something creative as well. Mm-hmm, yeah, I'm like I'm. I feel like I'm one of the few people that actually likes making thumbnails for their videos. So yeah, like I, I know a lot of people just don't or don't even bother with it, but. Sometimes it's even as fun for me as making the actual video because I just like creating things. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I took up graphic design and then I got a lot of like actual art classes, like not computer oriented classes, but like painting and like watercolor, like all those types of classes. And that just wasn't my vibe. So I switched on over to communication and it's just it's a broader. uh, It's got a broader spectrum, I think. And. So what do you do on a daily basis now? Um, just like not including school, just like anything really. How about school related? Um, you can tell me about the daily basis afterwards. Okay. If you like it. So I'm right now I'm taking five classes. 
Um, I'm a senior, so I actually have one more semester after this, and then I'm done. So really, mm. really close to the finish line. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm taking a couple sports classes right now. Uh, I have a social media class. Um, it's one class, actually. It's called participatory media. And what I have to do oh, wow. in it is you basically have to be a content creator. Well, that's uh, that's what the cl- the class is oriented hey. to. Yeah, that's, that's what, pretty yeah, cool. Exactly. And I didn't even know that going into it. I just read the description and said, okay, that sounds that sounds neat. And I went into it. Well, like, like a media figure, basically. Yeah, exactly. And I thought to myself, like, I, I already do this. Like, this is something I know how to, how to do. And it's a tool that I've had under my belt for years. So perfect. Yeah. So I'm working on that. We were, we were actually, uh, I'm, I'm doing a podcast for it. So like for hockey stuff, that's what I chose to do. So I'm, I actually did one just before, just before this. So I'm, yeah, there's a I'm lot the of hockey yeah. in your life, dude. Oh uh, yeah, I mean yeah, it's been a do you it's still a big part uh, do, of my do life. you still um what's that? Play hockey? Do you still play hockey? Um well yes and no. Um <laughs> so yes I was no. telling you about before we we started, so I had a little bit of an injury this year. Yeah. Um I broke my leg uh really early on, like like the end of January. Tore my ACL, tore my meniscus, complete tear. Um it was this year. It was this year. Well, like end of January. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. Um, completely tore it. Um, I had to get surgery and it was a pretty intensive surgery and I was bedridden for a month and a half and I was on crutches for five months. So I've been out of the game for quite a while. And oddly enough, during that, like, I think right before, like, I think like three days before I had surgery, um, I, I was just sitting in my chair editing because after surgery, I had to be bedridden because I was like in a machine. A lot of time to edit, yeah. basically. Well, well, bef- when I could get up out of the bed, yeah. But there was about a month or so I couldn't get out of bed. But Oh, that's... and you couldn't have anything there either? Mm-hmm. I mean, the only thing I could really do is I like, watch TV then. But, but, uh, oh, I see. Yeah. But when I was able to get out, I figured to myself, I'm going to have a lot of time to edit. But right before the surgery, like two days, my graphics card died. No way. I swear to God. Yep. Really? I swear to God. <laughs> so, and I just, and since I was out of a job because I was on injured leave, I had to dedicate my money to bills and stuff. So I had to wait like three to four months to get wow. it to another graphics card. And then I the had universe. to wait. And then I had to wait until I was healthy enough to stand up so I could install it myself. So, yeah. The universe just did you one there, huh? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They uh, they bent me over on that one. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So but, that's um, really unfortunate because maybe we could have seen a lot of edits by now. Oh yeah, I I that aren't there. I was out for like five months and then bedridden for two. So yeah, I I could have had about a good three months or so just dedicated to like editing because I was out of school. I had to drop all my classes for that time. So mm. I, I, I was actually really looking forward to like, okay, like if there's anything I'm going to look forward to, it's, it's, it's editing. I can have enough time to edit, but I had to wait. Mm. Yeah. I had to wait for that graphic started to get in and put that in. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. That's really uh, baffling that that happened. Yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? Well, I mean, shit happens, but, um, yeah. I'm back, on, back my feet on your now. feet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I'm definitely back on my feet now. I can't play hockey yet. Um, still doing a lot of strength training, so like a lot of leg presses, quad training, all that type of stuff until I feel Working like I'm out. at a hundred percent. And then once I feel like I'm at a hundred percent, then I'll I'll be back on the ice. Hmm. Yeah. So you're either way, you're not new to editing, basically. No, no, not at all. What would you say to a new editor that would like to begin uh, i mean there's I a lot of things i could say but um i think the two biggest things i like to emphasize or maybe three is number one work on your basics so uh mm. screen scene selection and uh pacing those are two two of the biggest things um knowing where to splice your clips and knowing how to span out your video those are the two essential things you really need to 
you know, to edit. Um, sometimes you can make, actually a lot of the times you can make edits just on those two things alone. So that's why I think they're the, the most important, or at least the most essential things that you should start out the with. The core mm -hmm. of an edit. Because I've seen a lot of people try to skip, like skip steps. And what happens is you just get really like weird edits. Like, like that's you, what Crimson talked about in podcast one. Oh yeah. He was, yeah, he was really good <laughs> with um, effects and such. Mm -hmm. But we were constantly talking about his basics. Mm -hmm. It sort of ruins the entire edit. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like nothing, you can admire, like, oh wow, like that's a cool effect. Like, I can't do that effect myself. Or that would take a lot of. That would be really synergy, time right? What's that? There has to be some synergy. Yeah, there has to be something it. to to piece it all together. If it, if you don't have your basics, then the whole thing falls out, and it just you know you gotta have a bunch of puzzle pieces that aren't connected. So definitely, you know, work on your basics. Um, and yeah. another thing is to keep improving. So I mean, you can edit for fun. I'm not telling you what to edit, how to edit, but if you're looking to be an editor and rise up, like, you know, if you want to be someone, you know, like good, never stop yeah. improving. Like just, you know. You need to have a passion burning in you. Mm -hmm. to move just a constant further, strive for improvement, better. whether it be bettering yourself against yourself, against other people, doesn't matter how you do it. And then the third thing mm. is step out of your comfort zone. Because that's that's how I think you improve. I think I mentioned that earlier. Yeah, I've been preaching comfort zone <laughs> mm -hmm. so much as well. Same here, especially in the last couple of years. Um, but you know, it's kind of ironic because we talk about step out of your comfort zone and all that stuff, and we're still stuck in Sony Vegas. Yeah, that's isn't. Uh, Would you isn't that ironic? recommend Sony Vegas for new editors? Um, yeah, I would recommend. Actually, I oh, you I, would. I think I would recommend Sony Vegas for new editors because it's, um, it's it's easy. That's 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 I guess that's that the best way true. to put it. It's really really easy. And it's super duper user friendly, and I think that's what Vegas has going for it. And I feel like once, I mean, you could start off in um, you could start off in like Premiere too. I mean, it's kind of the same thing, but you yeah, definitely start off in a program like that. And then I feel like once you, you know. You work out the basics. You got your feet under you. Um, and I feel like then would be a good time to move on to a program like AE or, or you got the new Vegas effects now. Some just something more advanced like that. Mm. Because sometimes I feel that Sony Vegas might be a dead end, right? Um, um to you need to, to learn extent, completely maybe. new programs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Never stop broadening your horizons. So, like I like yeah, I said, but I there's plan still on. so much you in sony vegas yeah people are capable of and people take it for granted because there's a lot of things that you can do in ae people think that it's ae exclusive and you can if you really really wanted to and work with the right things and do it the right way you can recreate it in vegas wouldn't say just as well yeah. but you can it, i mean it's possible some of the things you can do in there that is true mm -hmm. so don't underestimate you know, the program you're using. Yeah. But when it comes to editing, do you want to work as an editor? I mean, you, you did talk about that there is a spot for you, right? Um, yeah. And so online, not, there's so much to do. Oh, absolutely. And um, I'm not quite sure what I want to do yet, if I want to freelance or if I want to work for a company. Um, but I definitely think it's it's a skill that I'd like to utilize for, you know, professional. So you're not just going to use this as a hobby. Um, I mean, for now it's a hobby, but I yeah. I I just look at it as it's another tool under the belt for me professionally. So like, mm. like we all know how to use Photoshop. You all know how to like, like we all know how to video edit it. Like I, just, I look at that like, okay, here's my arsenal. And video editing is 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 the hammer in the arsenal. It's just it's a tool that I can utilize and one of your many <clears throat> like mm -hmm. yeah skills. And I feel like I yeah, exactly someone is best when they utilize not just one thing but everything they know together. So like yeah. I'm learning a lot of like communication stuff and like social media stuff and uh, in school right now. So I feel like 
what I take out of that and apply that and bring it like video editing into that. I feel like that's when I could find something that, that can, you know, hit my niche and where I want to be kind of yeah. blending all my skills together. So, um, so currently it's a hobby, but are there any like goals you're trying to reach with your editing? Mm, currently? Um, I don't know if any specific goals. Um, so you're there where you are, right? You're I, enjoying I mean, your editing. Like I, I like where I'm at, but like I said, um, I never stop improving. So I'm, I'm, I'm always still looking for ways to better myself, better my edits. Um, mm -hmm. while still keeping that, like, I mean, that, that touch that I have, um, I definitely would like yeah. to get a full up. I guess that's, I guess that's a goal. <laughs> I like to get a full up cause I haven't made a full in years. <laughs> All of my stuff. I know is, what you're good at writing a full on, you know, on a 61 server, right? Oh, yeah. please <laughs> tell me about the essays. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's up with man. that? <laughs> Um, I don't, I just, I type a lot. Sometimes I'll just get carried away. Um, whenever we're, we're having some type of debate or something to talk and I'll just, I'll just start typing away. And then next thing I know, I'll have like, I'll have like, I'm like two paragraphs. I don't know, man. I'm just, I just, I'm just, a, yeah. I'm a heavy, I it's got like, heavy fingers. You see, I don't know. you see, Corey is typing, but that happens so long. Oh my, yeah, I know. And man. then, and then comes the essay. <laughs> yeah, and then comes like 20 minutes later Yeah. <laughs> when, when the conversation's moved on. Yeah, but anyways, um, back to editing, right? Mm -hmm. um, we've been talking about um, the different things about editing and what is important. You didn't mention flow. What would flow be to you? If you're trying to explain it to a completely new editor, that's, what would you see really, as really, really tough. flow? That's a really it tough. Is. It's yeah, broad. It's really, really tough. And I think, I think flow... Um, Honestly, I feel like it's just a fancy extension on pacing. I mean, it. I mean, obviously, it's a little bit more on what than again? that on pacing. Uh, it's, yeah. a, it's obviously a little bit more than that, but I think it boils down to your pacing. So mm. knowing uh, how long a clip should be on the screen, um, if it's too long, too short. Um, there, just, there are definitely many things that you can. Yeah, there's a lot of factors that go into that flow. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of ways you can work with that, and hence, you know, how everybody's got their own different styles that work for them. Um, I, for me, um, I think hard syncing for me is just something that I've always stuck to. Because um, I, I, in my head, I, I guess I have an vivid, a vivid imagination. I just, I think of so many things at once when I'm, you know, because we all play out our edits in our head before we put it down on the timeline. Oh, like, you don't, do that? Don't even, don't even lie. Like everyone does it. Hey, hey, wait, wait. <laughs> That ain't true. Oh, oh. <laughs> Me for example, for example. Okay, wait. Um, as a general thought, I might have like some thought of how something might play out, right? Mm -hmm. But then I have an anime, and I put like things together, and suddenly, oh, this looks good. Well, I, yeah. And then like, I continue working out. Yeah, like I've had situations where you just kind of like piece things together, and you just kind of come to like like an epiphany. And I like, play oh the God, puzzle like, game, dude. Yeah, but. At least, well, let, let's say most of the time. Then, most of the time, a lot of us just, you know, we we pre we pre uh, pre think out our uh, our stuff for what we're doing. That is true, though. Um, but I guess accepting like with the exception of like ICs and stuff. And for me, mm -hmm. it's like I it's it's an anime music video, so you th you have to use for us for AMV editors, we start off with a song and then we put videos to the song. It's not the other way around for the most part. I mean, yeah. you know, like, I mean, you can't do that. I mean, I'm not telling you you can't do that. And that it's like, it's actually like that in uh, professional editing. You, you put down your video and then you build everything else off on the video. But for, for AMV editors, it's anime music video. So it's uh, a lot to do about the music. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly yeah i mean the music and your video have to, they kind of have to be in yeah. sync for me so i kind of, sort of work around the music basically mm -hmm. that's 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 how i approach it i kind of i have this weird metaphor i think about it when i think of sync um i don't even know if anyone could even comprehend it i haven't been able to uh, explain it successfully so i think of it like oh i think of it like Go for it. um 
like waves in the ocean. So I, I envision waves in the ocean and you have your slow part and that's when the ocean is really calm, right? And then you start mm -hmm. picking up, you know, the waves start getting a little heavier. And then once you get your action part, you, storm, envision, like, man. It, it, you get like a storm waves. Yeah, so I, just, <laughs> I, I envision that in my head and I feel like your clips should match that, like that wavelength. Like everything yeah. should be in sync. I'm not saying so, like, it, it should be to a T, but you know your clip. There's a be... harmony, and yeah, uh, yeah there that's is the word I'm looking for. Harmony. Fast, slow, fast, slow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, there has to be some type of harmony between the your music choice and your uh, the, uh, the, the your visual stuff. Oh yeah, you see new editors. Um, they completely laugh at the idea of there being well not new editors but certain editors mm -hmm. laugh at the idea of there being a story in your edit it's like well hello there's a, a one minute edit what, what what are you talking about a story mm -hmm. and it even goes but, the other way around there's there's other people who think this this edit doesn't have a story to it well, what even is it like what you know it, it goes both yeah. ways and i think both are fine um i mean you can edit Whatever you want. If you want to make a story, you can make a story. Just look at it for what it is. Don't go there in. There's so many factors as well. It's mm -hmm. like if you have an action edit, sure, go ahead. Just like, just do whatever you feel like. But mm -hmm. then you have a slow. Um, yeah. And I, I, like, I sometimes feel like a slow edit is more prone to being about a story or at least, at least trying to mm -hmm. provoke the viewer to have some type of emotion. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, like, I edit like, like all around edit. emotion, man. Yeah, yeah like, uh huh, like a like a vent edit is basically what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you? Do you try to push out emotion, or do you like, um, um like you I you edit for the badassery? Um, actually, I mean, for most of I guess my history, I've been more of the badassery type. Um, that's just what I grew up on, so that's what I've been, I guess tailored to but i've definitely wanted to get more into that type of editing and um i mean it's not something that i i have done it like uh i guess that collab with marty is is an example that's up on my channel mm. um i guess some met parts as well that i've done um yeah it certainly starts to make you think about mm -hmm. what is my purpose of this edit exactly like, and I do, th I do though think that if something has a story to it, I mean, it's more preferable than not having a story, I guess. But it's, yeah. it's, it's the an ideal edit is an edit that has everything. So like a story, and that that like, I guess that mm, badass. But really, like, then I mean, again, then again, like a technically so much sound harder. Edit. Yeah. That's that's the trade off. It's it's so much harder to to have mm. a technically sound edit that also tells a story and invokes some type of emotion on its viewer. That's that's I think that's the ultimate like end all be yeah. all type of edit you wanted. Like everyone should. Man, for. we have been editing for quite a long time, right? Yeah, I mean, been yeah. years. I mean, you and me both. But, yeah, but yeah. thing is, the community just keeps growing, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you what do you think about the new completely new editors that are still children um, are joining? We're, we're talking about twelve years old, thirteen years old. It, it's crazy because we do have those types of editors. Yeah, around. and it's merging, right? Mm -hmm. with, um, with our community. Uh, what I do what I can say about that is I think a lot of those younger kids coming in uh coming into the community, they have a lot more resources than we did back in the day so yeah. like definitely um like when, when we first started editing there what there were no discord servers you can join um it was really tough like you you couldn't if you had like like it's like somebody you idolized or like like an editor you really looked up to and like you just you would just comment on one of the videos maybe send them a message and just hope to god they respond <laughs> um you know <laughs> yeah um nowadays you can join a server and you can be 12 years old 12 13 years old thinking okay I'm, like i want to be better at editing you join and it, they got all these you know a plus editors in there 
and on the side you got all these channels with like with like uh like um, let me go down here we got like editing questions like anime sources and sources like just like all these different types yeah. of resources that these kids can use and i i that's why i think it's unfair it really is it's unfair like i wish we had that but um man it's, we were like great for them back in the day we were like holy shit look at this circle transition i did mm-hmm. just moving the fucking screen <laughs> yeah, around right. that's so innovative and here you are with like pre-cut clips a lot of edits to look out to grab like grab some inspiration from mm-hmm. it's it's just completely different from oh, how absolutely. it used to be like what back in the day for me a, a lot of how i learned how to do different things um like I had people I would go to sometimes and ask questions, but for me, a lot of it, at least when I first started editing, yeah, actually even before I started really getting into like like Sony Vegas stuff, I would go on YouTube and just go frame by frame and just just analyze, just like just absorb mm. everything that I was looking at. Because you know how uh, you can use I would. I, now you can use the, the the period button in the comma to go frame by frame, but before you, I would just sit there and keep tapping the play and the pause yeah. button, <laughs> try, trying to get to that frame that I wanted, and just just trying to think it out, like how did he do this, and just you know try and recreate it on my own, and just through like just visual learning alone. So it's it's I think it's these the passion. Yeah, it is. It's the passion. Um, so I, I definitely think these kids nowadays have uh have a have a lot uh more potential and i guess they're more better off that just is having true. so much more resources now and so they have a lot more time as well right we're busy with stuff they have yeah yeah they have some school stuff and then they're back and then they just can grind that shit. <laughs> oh yeah absolutely like for me um i haven't even opened vegas i mean well not like besides like school stuff like i haven't yeah. opened a project of mine in, in like a couple months because i've been so wrecked up in like school and mm. it's priorities for us. And then I, you know, I work on the side. I had two jobs before I broke my leg. So it's just like, like and, and, you know, a lot of us are the same. So it, it's tough trying to make time for, you know, something we love. Yeah, it is. It it's really like is. editing. Yeah. I feel the same, man. Mm-hmm. Work, school, and then like you have to pick it. You want to edit or you want to have a social life? Yeah, yeah, that's no, another thing. No, missing in no. a social life. That's that's a real. You can't problem. pick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you and then can't sleep. Pick both. You can't forget about sleep. Like. <laughs> oh yeah, no, 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 no. There's no sleep. Oh yeah. <laughs> two two hours sleep every day. Let's yeah, go. I'll do that sometimes too. Um, like I'll I'll have yeah, I'll that's wake a up Monday for me. I'll wake up five thirty in the morning and go to work sometimes, and I'll oh. be running off like two three hours of sleep because. It's either homework or, or something like that, or even sometimes I'll just have a late night editing and you just get caught. You just get like you lost. Get caught in yeah, it, you get yeah. caught in the in the timeline, and next thing you know, it's like it's like one one thirty in the morning, and it's like oh like oh snap, I gotta I gotta go to sleep. I gotta be up for work in three hours. So Chug that coffee, dude. I'm not even a coffee drinker, which is ironic because at one of my jobs, I oh, I a barista. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know. Just it is kind <laughs> of ironic too. That is really ironic. Yeah. Like I, I make, you know, I help make coffee, but I don't drink. <laughs> so I don't know, man. Just, wow. I don't like, like you don't want your own coffee. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll what drink like Gatorade mean? and stuff like power drinks. So I do like me and just drink pre-workout. You could do that. You could do that. Whip up a, you can do that. a protein shake. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely works too. A uh, protein shake? Really? <laughs> yeah, man. Six o'clock protein shake. <laughs> that works. Oh well, yeah, man. Either way, I was just wondering if um, you have something to say to all editors, or even if you want to shout out yourself, plug yourself, or <laughs> thank your mother, thank somebody else. Well, I'm definitely thankful for my mother and all my, you know, like all those influential people in my life. That's that's a big thing for me. Um, yeah. Um, it's kind of tough kind of thinking of something that applies to everybody but um wait, wait I, but you have to thank mikasa mikasa is <laughs> your number one <laughs> all right jordan <laughs> all right um yeah, yeah i'm obsessed i'll admit it <sighs> yeah i, I mean we can see that <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, it's, she's my favorite character. I can't I can't beat around the bush. Um, yeah. Yeah, man. Just uh, I guess if there's anything I'd have to say to everybody, it's just um, keep doing what you love. Um, and the best, or at least the most important thing in in, uh, in video editing, or at least in any hobby, is just uh, you know follow your your passion. And if you're having fun, that's 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 all that counts in the end. You know, all that other stuff is just you know additives. I mean, we are editors. We're looking for the greatness. We're looking to mm-hmm. get better, do more, and love what we do. Exactly. Those are the, that's the three big things. And as long as you're having yeah. fun, the other two things will just, you know, they'll they'll come. They'll follow on its own, you know? Yeah, well. So I think we're going to wrap it up here. I have been Mark, also known as Dark Nova, your host. and. Thank you so much for joining us, Corey. You're welcome, buddy. It was a good, great, uh, great talking to you, and thanks for having me on. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right.